Joe don't know. That's the focus of tonight's angle. There's simply no way to spin it at this point. President Biden's first foreign trip was an unmitigated disaster. Even Jill's goofy jacket couldn't save it. Time Magazine's stupid cover couldn't frame it. And Biden himself, well, he couldn't explain it. So he reverted to tedious aphorisms. As that old expression goes, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Proof is in the pudding? Oh, I'd never heard that before. <laughs> if there was any doubt about what a complete flop this was, well, that doubt was erased after Biden emerged from his three-hour meeting with Vladimir Putin. Well, he had a total meltdown with his own comm shop. Oh, sorry, I meant the U.S. press corps. Why are you so confident he'll change his behavior, Mr. President? What do you do all the time? When did I say I was confident? Let's get it straight. I said, what will change their behavior is that the rest of the world reacts to them and it diminishes their standing in the world. He denied any involvement in cyber attacks. So how does that account to a constructive meeting as President, President Putin framed it? I don't understand that. Shockingly, Caitlin Collins posed a common sense question. In other words, she was trying to get at what incentive is there for Putin to stop cyber attacks on the United States? Well, the answer, of course, is zero under Joe Biden, because Biden speaks softly and carries the equivalent of a big foam pool noodle. <laughs> There's no there there, and everyone knows it. Because even if you're a rank partisan, you see that these meetings require real expertise, because there are real consequences to being outmaneuvered, which Biden was. What concrete evidence do you have from these three year, hour, three plus hours that, that suggests that any movement has been made? And I don't know, I don't, I don't mean no, that no, to be no, a, no, not, no, 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 but you're, you're all, question. look, to be a good reporter, you gotta be negative. You gotta have a negative view of life, okay? It seems to me the way you all, you never ask a positive question. <laughs> Is he kidding? <laughs> Is Biden kidding? He's been in Washington since Leonid Brezhnev was the leader of the USSR, and he's now just realizing that the media like to kick the, kick the hornet's nest every now and again? Plus, let's not forget that, what is it, 99.9% .9 of the reporters on that tarmac voted for Biden and practically campaigned for him and then masqueraded as reporting about him. Now, forget apologizing to CNN. Biden should have apologized to the American people. Biden rolled over for the Europeans, and today he let Vladimir Putin run circles around him right down to Putin's using Democrat talking points about America's race and crime problem. In American cities, every day people are killed. That includes leaders of various organizations. But you can't say a word about it. You, you, you don't have the time to say a word and somebody's killed. You know, I, I remember, I, I remember that uh, somebody ran away and was shot in the back, for example. Well, I guess Joe and Vlad, they did agree on one thing. America's systemically racist, right? Well, the fact is, any honest observer knows that if anyone knows even a tiny bit about foreign affairs, has to concede that this entire trip ended up being a complete waste of time and government resources. I was thinking about this today. Next time, we should just save everybody's time and just send a notary over there to sign whatever documents Europe puts in front of us. Oh, we'll be done. But remember, this has always been the Joe Biden that we knew and some of you came to love. He's always been more interested in being pals with people than ever making waves, even when making waves is what's required to deliver results for the American people. Remember, even before the summit began, it was obvious that Biden was just no match for the former KGB intel officer. It's one thing calling Putin a killer when the guy's 5,000 miles away in the Kremlin. But what about face-to-face? -face? Vladimir Putin laughed at the suggestion that you had called him a killer. Is that still your belief, sir, that he is a killer? <laughs> Answer the first question? <laughs> I'm laughing, too. They actually, I... So he is a killer. Well, look, I mean, he has made clear that... Uh, 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 
that was just excruciating. And it gets worse every time you watch it. He also picked up that annoying laugh reflex that Harris has whenever she's asked a hard question. This whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. <laughs> Open borders are so funny. Well, tonight, America is not laughing. Joe Biden is incapable of sitting across the table from any competent world leader, and he's certainly not able to convince him to change his mind on any significant issue. In the lead up to this trip, the White House took great pains, though, to remind everyone that Biden would be turning the page on the Trump's America first approach. Things would go back to normal, pundits gleefully pronounced, where we work with the world community and don't sit around just thumping our chests. But the fact is, in international negotiations, effective leaders always work to advance and safeguard their own country's national interests, until now at least. The fact is, Biden doesn't know how to get tough. He's a guy who's simply most comfortable being everybody's friend. So all you need to do is put him in a situation where he has to choose between getting along with other people or making them necessarily uncomfortable. Well, he's going to choose the friendship route every single time. That might be nice in a Hallmark movie, but not here. But Trump didn't care about making people uncomfortable, not when it came to protecting American prosperity and national security. This is the B team, as we've told you all along. Under Trump, we had real intellects like Bob Lighthizer for trade, Steve Mnuchin at Treasury, and Mike Pompeo at State. He'll join us in a few moments. But now we have people in charge who pretty much couldn't get top jobs in any other administration except this one. Biden and his team went to Europe, and they got zero tangible benefits for America. They resolved the Boeing Airbus dispute by simply caving to France. Boeing got shafted. Of course, Boeing's gonna, Biden's going to say, oh, we got language on China. It's great. Here's one problem. The language on China is so weak that the Europeans aren't bound in any meaningful way by it, and China really isn't affected at all. The commitment is basically just that we should all keep pursuing a conversation with China. Big deal. China dominates while you try to dialogue. China wasn't even specifically singled out in any of the human rights paragraphs. It was all kind of bland and meaningless. In international diplomacy, words matter. And over the past week, the angle has taken you through the nitty gritty, and you now know that China got off scot-free. The NATO communique referred to China as a challenge, but Russia as a threat. Even that was no big deal, though, since Russia got their Nord Stream 2 pipeline while America got higher energy prices across the board. Here's the bottom line. Putin is thrilled with this summit. Don't take my word for it. Here's Russian chess grandmaster and Putin opponent, Garry Kasparov. Putin got what he wanted. That's why he was beaming with joy when he left uh, 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 press, um, the, 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 the summit and went to the press conference. The Europeans are celebrating. And China is completely comfortable. Now, if Obama's first foreign policy trip was the equivalent of a, an apology tour, Biden's was a surrender tour. As a result of his efforts, going forward, Europe will be in the driver's seat. China will probably take Taiwan. Our southern border is going to just remain wide open. In Russia, they'll be able to hack us at will. If the Democrats were a functional party that really cared about putting our interests first, they never, never would have nominated Biden in the first place. The man is totally in over his head and always has been. Since his days in the Senate, since he ran for president in 1988, he's always been the punchline. But now, unfortunately for us, America is as well. And that's the angle.